Honeys, welcome back to my channel. I thought I'd show you how I make chicken rice and peas. Now, I was actually taught by a family member who's from Jamaica. Um, so this is just how I cook mine. I'm not a professional a professional chef or anything like that. Um, as I say, this is how I was taught to do it many, many, many years ago. And uh, this is exactly how my family enjoy me making it so as you can see i'm chopping onions and i have got a little mixture here of uh, the brown onions and red onions there you are like you can see and i've also chopped some garlic and popped in here now i'm taking well i prefer to use a mixture of chicken drumsticks and chicken thighs i just think the meat is a little bit more tasty um so as you can see what i'm going to do well as i'm doing here i'm just taking the skin off of the chicken it may look a little awkward me doing it because I have got arthritis and I have got it in my hands. So, um, yeah, I understand if it looks a little bit awkward. And I just continue to just skin these chicken drumsticks until I've done all of them. And now I'm going to do exactly the same to the chicken thighs. They're a lot easier to do because you haven't got that like knuckle bit around um, the end of the bone from the drumstick. Now here you can see I'm putting the chopped onions and garlic into a plastic container that's a lot bigger. And I'm just going to season. So I'm using black pepper. I tend to do it upside down in the lid because it's the only way my hands will let me do it. So there goes the black pepper, some table salt. Um, just do it to how you would like it. I'm actually seasoning quite a lot, so it looks as though there's quite a bit going in, giving that a nice little mixture. And now I'm putting in some medium curry powder and just do that to taste. But you do want the chicken to sort of take on the flavor of a curry. Now I'm not making a chicken curry, I'm actually making curried chicken and there is a difference. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of the hot curry powder. And giving it all a nice mix together. So just mix it all through. And then once you've given it a nice mix, it's time to pop the chicken in. So I'm doing a mixture and putting both the thighs and the drumsticks in here. And then it's time to get your hands dirty. And just use, just use what God's given you, you know, and just get in there with your fingers and just sort of massage the meat a little bit. Get all those lovely spices and the onion and the garlic all over the chicken. Really dig down the bottom and sort of bring the spices and the onion garlic from the bottom up to the top so I've now been and washed my hands pop the lid on and this is now going to go into my fridge until the next day 
So now you can see I've actually got a self raising flour and I'm about to make some fried dumplings. Um, I don't measure any particular amount. It's just by, just by eye really. Season with salt. If you want to, you can make them sweet and season with, well, add sugar to it. I've added some milk. I'm just popping it into my food mixer and I've got it on the um, sort of like on the the beating attachment and then I'm adding a drop more water to it because what you want is you just want like a kneading consistency exactly the same as if you were going to knead some bread so you don't want it sloppy but you don't want it really firm So I've just added a little bit more water to it. And you'll see the consistency like that. There you go. That's what you're looking for. A nice sort of sticky consistency. And now I'm just going to pop some more flour onto this non-stick um, rolling thingy that I've got, that I've had for donkey's years. Now you don't need to really work this, you know, you're not kneading it as though you were making bread. But just take some pieces off, about the size of a golf ball, I suppose, and, um, you know, just sort of like make them into a ball, literally, roll them into a ball. And then I've popped a little tiny bit of flour at the bottom of my bowl so that they don't stick. And then as I've made one into that little ball, I've then popped them into the bowl. And there you can see, there they all are. Okay, and now I'm going to cook the dumplings. So I've got a plate there next to the frying pan with a rack on it so that I can drain them. Now you can see now I've taken each ball and what I'm doing is I'm just sort of working it into like a flat circle. And I will be doing that with all of them. Just work it into that flat circle. Not completely flat, but um, well, as you can see, exactly as I'm doing there. And then you're going to pop them into the frying pan. Now you do really need to stay with these as well because you're going to be keeping an eye on them, you're going to be turning them and you're going to want them to sort of puff up a little bit. There you are, look, you can see that they've started to puff up. And then just strain them off and just pop them onto the, the rack to train a bit more. And then you're going to be repeating this for all of them. There you go, that's the lot that's been cooked up. So I've just popped them into a bowl with um, a tea towel at the bottom to uh, to catch any oil that might be left on them. And now it's time to do the chicken. But what I do is you can see that I'm actually taking the onion and garlic off of the chicken and just putting the chicken in. Now, the chicken isn't going to be fully cooked in the frying pan. It literally is 
just to brown it, just to seal it on both sides. So you can see it's browned. So that's all nicely sealed. Again, take it out of the pan and put it onto the rack to drain. Now I'm going in with the thighs, doing exactly the same. I've taken off the onion and the garlic. Purely and simply because I just don't want it to go in yet. It would, it would burn, it would overcook. Of course you are going to get the little tiny little bits that you may miss as you can see in the pan. And once I've cooked all of my chicken, I then transfer it into a big saucepan. And now I've added the onion and garlic and all the spices that were in the bowl, in this square container, added them to the frying pan to cook them down for a bit, and then poured some water into the container just to, so that I could use up all those last little bits of the curry powder and popped it all back into the frying pan. And I'm just cooking it for several minutes. And then that's going into my big saucepan with the chicken in it. And there you go, it's all in the saucepan now. So I'm going to be popping the lid on and I will be cooking this for several hours. And I mean several hours. So I'm now doing the rice. So I measured three big cupfuls of rice. And so to this you would add six cupfuls of water. But I actually just go with five purely and simply because I wash my rice and there's always a little bit of residue water left at the bottom of the pan. So you'll see in a minute that I literally do use just five uh, cups of water. And when you wash your rice, then just wash it until the water runs, well, as clear as possible, just to get rid of the starch. So I actually washed mine. I think I washed mine about three times this, on this particular meal. And I'm using basmati rice. So I'm just adding in the water. Say so five cups is going in. taken over to the cooker and I'll just be adding some salt to the water and then the next step I will just break the rice up in the saucepan using a fork and that's the only time that I'll be touching the rice so just break it up and then just let it come back to the boil and now I add my washed kidney beans and black eyed peas and bring it up to the boil, turn it right down, leave it until most of the water is absorbed and then put the foil on the top, turn off the gas and just leave it to carry on cooking itself. Now you can see that I've taken the plantain and I've peeled it, cut it on the diagonal and just popping it in the frying pan with some more oil that's nice and hot. This is something that you need to stay with again, just to keep your eye on it and regularly turn it. And the result you're looking for is a lovely golden colored plantain.
gotta pinch myself to prove that she's my girl. My girl. There's no place I'd rather be here in this world. Cause I have no doubt. And now with everything cooked, well, just a little bit more plantain to finish cooking, but the chicken's all done, the rice is all done, it's now time to set up, ready to dish up. So you can see I've got boiled rice with black-eyed peas and kidney beans. I've got curried chicken that's just literally falling off the bone now, plantain, fried dumplings and a nice mixed salad mostly green salad at the back there and um this is dessert millionaire's cheesecake i hope you've enjoyed it <laughs>